We've been hearing about quantum computing for a while. Well, researchers at Michigan have been developing the technology, and they're getting closer. So we wanted to learn about it and ask, what are quantum computers going to do for us? The most famous problem that these computers are aimed to uh, contribute to uh, are, is the factoring of numbers. What most people don't recognize is that all of their security in their internet access, in their bank accounts, any security you can imagine on computers is protected by encryption that involves the factoring of numbers. If we want more protection, we have to get a bigger number and the size of our computer grows large. These kinds of issues, I think, will be where we will see quantum computers being used and they'll be invisible to most people. What exactly is a quantum computer in layman's terms? In a quantum computer, we don't have bits of information. We have something called a quantum bit. And a quantum bit also takes on the value of zero or one, but it can also take on, and this is a little complicated, but it's called a superposition of zero and one. Even a single number, that single bit, can be zero and one simultaneously. So tell us, what are the engineering challenges involved with developing a quantum computer? There is a very definite relationship between the zero and the one that is difficult to understand physically. If I play a single note on a violin, um, I get a nice pure tone. And I can play another note on the violin and I get a nice pure tone. Now if these two notes are very close to each other and I play them both at the same time, what you'll hear is you'll hear both notes but you'll hear kind of wah, 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 wah like this. They are going in and out of phase with each other. Well, the same problem occurs in a quantum computer. For every bit, I need to maintain the phase coherence between my zero and one, and also between the zero and one in this state, the zero and one in this state, and all the rest of these down here. If you screw it up by a slight time lag, say, or some other disruption, um, you lose that relationship. One of the ways we think we're, in our lab, improving this a little bit, what we use are little pieces of semiconductor quantum dot. They're very small. And instead of using wires to get information in and out of these dots, we use light. And that's where the lasers come in. We can put information in and out um, of these devices on a time scale of about a trillionth of a second without disturbing the local environment of these dots that cause them to lose their coherence relative to each other. Eventually, the universe will win. We will lose the phase between these two bits, but it takes time. As long as I can do my calculation faster than that before the universe destroys it, I'm good. But that means I may only have anywhere from a billionth to a microsecond, maybe, to do the calculation. With uh, using light, that's not a problem. Will we ever see laptop computers or computers uh, in our home that are quantum computers? It's not likely. The algorithm for factoring numbers does run on a quantum computer. But uh, doing video games, balancing your checkbook, it's not likely at this point um, that we see how a quantum computer is going to be sitting on your desk at home. So we're still a ways off from having quantum computers, and we may never have them in our homes. But they could make a big difference in how secure we are, and the key could turn out to be all contained in a laser beam. If you're in China now, you can't get to Twitter, you can't get to YouTube, you can't get to Facebook. If you Google for Tiananmen Square, uh, the connection will hang up. 